Hi everybody, this is Madhav here from Remote Marketing Podcast, and you know it's been a it's been a you know interesting couple of weeks for the podcast, uh, specifically. Um, you know, some of the episodes did surprisingly well, and um, you know the audience has increased. There's more people who are listening to this, so I'm super super thankful for all of your support. Um, today, I'm going to talk about employee advocacy and how to implement it with a remote marketing team. Um, so, you know, I've been a marketer for almost a decade now, um, and I've tested out over a hundred marketing tactics to, uh, you know, figure out, you know, to figure out like what increases my product's awareness in our marketing, in our market category. The, my idea of increasing product awareness is pretty simple you know um it's each of our prospects here hears about us at least twice from independent sources right so let's say you know someone hears about our product in i don't know like um in a in a in a blog post you know in this tools roundup and then you know then they see someone recommending our product on twitter right so um it you know when I hear things from two different independent sources, it makes me at least very interested to kind of check out the product. Right now, you can increase product awareness via SEO, content marketing, all of these other channels. But over the last couple of years, I've started seeing a trend. Now, almost everyone today invests in their personal brand, and that's probably because you know there there are a lot of these online you know, success stories, communities about people, you know, becoming millionaires, people, you know, killing it in their careers, um, or just, you know, leading happy life, whatever. And that was all thanks to a strong personal brand. Um, and they correlate a strong personal brand to something that gets them better opportunities, higher paying assignments, and kind of, you know, make their voice heard in the world in their own way, right? And we're also seeing a trend of, this global networking online, right? So more people are globally connecting with each other thanks to social networks like LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. You're seeing more people being active participants in global communities like Hacker News, Reddit, Facebook groups. And, you know, these people know that these communities are great networking mediums, um, you know, which obviously in turn helps them build an even more powerful personal brand. And then the third thing is that more people are building their personal portfolio sites and you know their own newsletters and blogs today to kind of showcase to their world, right? And when I see these people with all these personal brands, um, like now this belief became a little more clearer to me when I opened my LinkedIn and it just popped up with like this one company's employees announcing about their launches repeatedly to the point that I cannot avoid that. I cannot miss that launch. You know, I have to check it out, you know, because it's being, you know, uh, like referred, liked, it's everywhere, right? So um, this is exactly when I started exploring, you know, I, I realized that this is employee advocacy and there is a thing like employee advocacy and it could be, something that I could work out in our own marketing, um, you know, arsenal or, you know, and it could be one of the enablers uh, for our product awareness strategy. So in today's episode, I'm going to summarize all of my research when building out an employee advocacy program at a small business. Um, this has some tips, tricks, processes to create your first employee advocacy program at a zero dollar budget. And you can kind of avoid the mistakes I made and validate the strategy much faster than I did. Um, so by the end of this episode, you should be able to create the version one of an employee advocacy strategy, right? Now, before I actually get to the tips um, and like the steps, why to consider employee advocacy strategy? Well, I explained it. <laughs> but, um, you know, with number one is, you know, with personal branding on the rise, like I explained before, you might have employees with a significant network reach, you know, and to be honest, it's a lot more easier to convince your employee to share something about the company versus someone who's not an employee, right? Uh, so this is an advantage for you. And the second thing is, um, you know, 
it opens a new product awareness channel you know by leveraging networks and creating a buzz in the community um so it's just one of those things that could push um, your uh, leadership in your market category right and the second question which i get asked a lot is when to consider an employee advocacy strategy and i'll be honest here right you should build the culture of making your employee advocates of your product you know from hire number 1 um you know it's it's always great when you can when you've got employees who are just you know uh, passionately talking about your uh, product but ideally in terms of you know like impact you'll you'll probably see um you know a lot more visible a lot more impact uh you know as the number of employees increase so you'd see a much better returns from employee advocacy efforts when you're let's say a team of 30 and then when let's say you're a team of 300 there's even more impact um all right so <clears throat> now that we've gotten out of this way you know these things out of the way these questions out of the way um let me get to you know six or seven tips and steps to kind of build out your first employee advocacy strategy all right so let's look at this scenario you have been convinced right now to build out your employee advocacy Uh, to at least test out this employee advocacy right so the first thing you need to uh, understand uh, or you need to decide is you need to define a medium of announcing to team members um and you know there are there are various ways to do that you could just send them an email you could use a software you could um you know other different mediums right now in my opinion most employee advocacy tools are ridiculously expensive you know um or pretty expensive like even the you know the, the tools that aren't popular are some surprisingly expensive um and to be honest i found them to be overpriced they don't offer enough value for the price charged it's somewhere around like anything upwards of 300 dollars um and um you know it just it doesn't make sense especially if you're a small business with like a team size of 20 to 50 um and usually those tools have like um you know it's basically like the company keeps posting updates in there and then they have in their list to just you know retweet or share directly from the dashboard and if they do that then they'll kind of end the lead you know enter this leaderboard which you can see like which are the top 3 employees that's that, that's probably the value they're trying to sell but what i realized was that when we adopted such a tool um you added an extra step like people actually now had to log into this app and kind of do that like nobody like people signed up once and then nobody logged in again so there was no um uh, employee advocacy done right so we want the best thing when defining a medium of announcing to members is to keep it simple my advice is just use email just send them an email saying that hey you know what we have this new ebook launching and we would love your support to hype it up that's all now once you've kind of defined the medium the second thing is you need to define the narrative the messaging of this launch you know what how do you want to tell the story how do you want your employees to kind of tell the story right um and this is something that needs to be developed by the product marketing team the product marketer and the company right um and this is something i you know as a product marketer i have done that you know So the way I used to do was I used to sit down with the product manager and just kind of you know brainstorm with them about how they kind of you know decided to build this feature how they tackled it all of that and then somewhere you'll find this one very uh, addressable very um, you know um uh, pain point that you can empathize with other people um and use that as something you know you know use that as a narrative for the launch so it's important to kind of sit down with your product manager and kind of talk about this um um yeah so yeah once you've kind of defined that the simplest thing would be to create a script you know like uh, two or three sentences and then just share it with your team members and be like you can just either share this exactly or you can share some form of it and just make it you know really simple for them to kind of share it out now the third thing is you need to keep you know once you've kind of defined the messaging and defined the medium of announcing it you need to keep the ask simple right so um when let's say you want a announcement to be spread across your employees networks right a retweet 
is super simple, right? It takes less than a second. Um, it's not a lot. It's, it's just, you know, whatever. And then asking them to create a video is going to be a lot harder. There's going to be a lot of pushback. There's a lot of effort from them that's acquired, right? So remember that retweets or just small things like that can be asked more frequently while video creation, you know, could probably be spaced out in like once every quarter, right? Or whatever um, frequency, um, you know, works for you. So I would say that when you make the ask, um, kind of spread it out. So like most of the asks are just sharing or retweeting. And then sometimes for the big launches, the big product updates, the version two of your product is when you kind of ask them to create a video, right? Um, so once you've, um, once you've done all of that, now when you actually need to, tell the team members to kind of share it out once you've got like a big product update that's coming in, once you've got a new ebook or a new conference that's coming in, right? Um, so I'll, I'll share my experience. I sent out the email to the team, okay? And I had three or four team members who had a really great uh, friendship with and um, they were like, you know, rallying behind this and um, out of the 50 people, maybe four um, showed interest actively, but that's it, right? So what I did was I experimented sending the email from the CEO to the team and the results were drastically different. Now from those 50, 20 were now interested to kind of um, share, uh, you know, to, to share it, right? So what I realized was that, um, uh, you know, the request for employee advocacy, you know, um, needs to be pushed from the top. The CEO needs to communicate to the team about the need, you know, that, hey, you know, I would love your support in uh, announcing and hyping this, you know, ebook um, up, right? And, you know, you can even scale it to a one-on-one -on -one communication. It doesn't even have to be like a direct email that goes out to the entire team. It could just be an email directly to every team member. And obviously there are a lot of email marketing tools that allow you to do that, which I'm not going to discuss today, but um, yeah, you, you know, you can do that. Um, so yeah, I would advise you to send the email from the CEO to the team. Um, now the next step, once you've, you know, the, the, the CEO sends it and everything that's all done, you should, you know, you should processify this workflow. Okay. So make it a bi-monthly exercise or make it a bi-weekly exercise. Uh, and you know, kind of part of everyone's routine that let's say it's, um, I don't know, shout out Saturdays or Twitter Tuesdays or, um, you know, whatever, uh, Facebook Fridays, something like that, you know, to ensure that every two weeks on a Wednesday, the whole team's gonna kind of announce this big news, right? Or it's going to be like um, once every two months, the team members are gonna create a video and kind of just create a buzz in the network. But it needs to be a process that needs to happen on a regular basis. And once that becomes part of everyone's routine, it's a lot simpler. So processifying it's great. Um, the way, and you know, there are a lot of different things that uh, how, you know, I processified it. I used to have a process that on every Tuesday, I would send an email, uh, the exact email that I want the CEO to send to the team. I would send him like, hey, really appreciate your help in kind of sending it to the team. And then he would really, like over a couple of, after a couple of weeks, he started anticipating that email. That every Tuesday I'm expecting an email from Madhav, which I'm gonna then forward to the team. Um, so yeah, processify the uh, process, the workflow of employee advocacy. And then um, one last, you know, just the last couple of tips here. Um, I would definitely encourage you to, you know, encourage everybody else in your team to build their personal brand. And here's why, you know, it's super helpful. Um, when you kind of breed this culture of building a personal brand, you start seeing team members who are really passionate about their work. They love talking about their work. They love being on different podcasts and, uh, you know, uh, talking about their work. And that gets you free brand presence, you know, that, that gets you free brand awareness opportunities in all of these different places. Um, and more importantly, it helps them build these networks, which you can then leverage for the employee advocacy efforts that you're gonna do. Um, the last thing that I would um, say here, uh, which is a little important here, is that when you've got these asks for employee advocacy from team members, right? Um, ensure that it's, it's, it's very selective noise that you create in the network, right? So let me explain it, right? Let's say your company is announcing something big all of the team once a week for the entire year, 
right? So one week, it's, um, oh, you know what, we published this great blog post, it's going to be, um, um, you know, it's just one of the best and blah, blah, blah. And then the next week is this really big product update and you're like, oh, you know what, we've got this new product, you should check it out. And the next week after that, it's like, oh, you know what, we've got this ebook, right? So what happens is that every, it diminishes the impact of a real update because they're like, oh, you know what, this company just announces everything as a big news. There's no such, like, um, everything is a big news for that, right? So you need to keep the big updates minimal and don't make every news a big news. Right, so um, instead like, you know, like a video and like this huge ass promotion should be done uh, when let's say um, you've got a new product update coming or you've got a big conference coming or something that's industry disrupting. And let's say something that is probably not as disrupting, you can probably just be like, share it out and then ask your team members to just kind of share it um, across the network, right? So not making too much noise, but enough noise to kind of get some attention out of it. So be selective in, the noise um so yeah um this is pretty much it um there's also one last tip i just remembered i'm gonna add that here um it, it is always a lot helpful sometimes when let's say you've got one or two team members who've got like a great brand presence that when the ceo sends out the email to the team they can kind of you know follow up with those particularly um important stakeholders in the company and be like hey you know what um hey you know would be great if you can help out with this your support would be immensely valuable right um and that also impacted uh, how many people actually shared out this employee advocacy email right so um yeah that is pretty much it so with all of these um tips i am pretty certain pretty um you know hopeful that you'll be able to create a version one of the employee advocacy program, test it out, see how it goes for you. And, you know, if you feel that this is something that you want to kind of uh, take it up on a large scale, make it like a big part of your marketing strategy, email me on madhav at remotemarketing.org and I'm going to try to get an employee advocacy expert, someone who's built it really uh, in a big way and, you know, make them share the experience. You can kind of go from building a version one to like a perfect beautiful employee advocacy strategy that's getting amazing results for your company right i hope you enjoyed the episode and i will see you in the next episode bye